Severson of the NBC Orchestra, inviting you to join Johnny and his guests, Gene Kelly, Shecky Green, Soccer Shanning, and Ronnie Graham. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Johnny. Singing in the rain, glorious <laughs> feeling, I'm happy again, I'm in the rain. Well, we got Gene Kelly on, they may make a remake on it. <laughs> really should have a thing when you do those high kicks. I could do that, singing in the rain. A little hat, a little cane, all that stuff. I'm in a funky mood tonight. By the way, I've been asked uh, to make an announcement by the fire department. They've asked me to announce that if you flick your bick, you better have a lighter. I'm singing. Last night, you, you sound good tonight. They're crazy tonight. Yeah. Last night, we had a conservative crowd, very polite. You know, before they went to sleep, they turned off the lights. How you feeling? Fine, very good. Ed is still recovering from, as you probably know by now, a rather harrowing experience the other day. His apartment burned down. Was it? Never mind that. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a lot of dancing here tonight. Uh, no, he's living in a hotel now, and uh, actually, you didn't lose all your possessions, because uh, many of Ed's possessions were divided up uh, previous to the fire. So luckily, <clears throat> one of them. How you doing, Doctor? Oh, feeling good. How's, how's our drummer, Shirley Temple? <laughs> and I say... <laughs> go, go figure. Huh? White cat wants to get an afro. <laughs> anyway... <clears throat> well, look, now, Tommy Newsom is in, uh, normally leaves the band when Doc is over here, when Ed is off, and... Uh, Tommy is a great arranger. In fact, the number that Buddy Rich did last night yeah. was one of Tommy's charts. And it's... But Tommy is not the most exciting conversationalist in the world. Uh, do you know that he, uh, his house plant bought a radio? <laughs> uh... Well, you know, the world is going bananas lately. People are doing crazy things. A wino came up to me on the... just before I came in here tonight. Stuck a gun in my rib and said, can I have $40 for a case of wine? And I said, a case of wine? Why? And he says, because I won't have to bother you every night. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, let's go to the news and see if James Schlesinger is having a garage sale of nuclear warheads. <laughs> uh, I hear the shakeup at the White House may not be over. Somebody saw the president's dog, Liberty, today cleaning out his kennel. <laughs> grim. Now, here's an interesting... Uh... That was grim, wasn't it? Interesting sidelight. Um, I think for the first time in history, a president has been ordered to testify in a court case. And that is the court case, of course, of uh, Squeaky Fromm, who they say attempted to assassinate the, uh, the president. And the judge ruled that President Ford had to be a witness. It's the first time in history that a president has had, to, I guess, to testify in a court. Now, what they did, they went back and videotaped the questions and answers, and the president was rather worried that, you know, that that would be seen elsewhere, but apparently it's not. It's only going to be shown to the jury. And to make absolutely sure that it will not be seen by anybody at the jury, uh, they're going to sell it to ABC television, and it'll never be seen again. <laughs> Anyway, the election is it's going to be a long time for this election. They're campaigning already. And uh, President Ford's political strategists are trying to figure out a new theme, a new slogan. You know, they had Tippy Canoe and Tyler, too. Uh, 
You don't remember that one? What were some of the other ones? I like Ike. I like Ike. Um, Now, what president had there once was a lady named Hall? What? There hasn't been one yet, but if she runs, she's going to win. Go to your room. <laughs> anyway, they're hard at work trying to come up with a slogan for President Ford. And they've, some of the themes they've come up with so far are uh, President Ford's feet are on the ground and sometimes his whole body. <laughs> Yeah. Ronald Reagan says he has still not decided whether he is going to run for president. It is just a coincidence that his wife Nancy was out this week shopping for an oval carpet. <laughs> Some people say that uh, California's governor, Jerry Brown, is possibly considering a Democratic nominee. There's going to be a problem. I don't think Jerry Brown would accept the nomination at all. Unless he could get a room at the Y within walking distance <laughs> of the White House. So that's now, the Democratic chairman, whose name is Robert Strauss, said that a lot of the presidential, the Democratic presidential candidates this election lack a lot of popular appeal and they're not very exciting. And I don't think that's true at all. For example, there's, uh, oh, what's his name? <laughs> and uh, the, um, the other guy, Ronnie, um, uh, Strauss is right. There's not uh, any. Well, let's see what else is happening. The CIA is back in the news again. Where do you think now it's been suggested that the CIA had spies? It, you're close, by the way. In television, they said that they thought that they had CIA agents working at ABC television. Absolutely true. And there may be some truth to that rumor, because I... Uh, I saw Beretta's parrot last night wearing a trench coat. <laughs> what you... I understand there over at ABC, all the employees are trying to hide the evidence. Howard Cosell put his toupee in a paper shredder. <laughs> and, uh, the CIA agents are everywhere, though. I saw the streets of San Francisco last night. Carl Malden sneezed and two midget spies fell out. <laughs> Here is, there's an interesting item in the paper today from El Toro Marine Base. Now, you're a former Marine. Are you familiar with what's happening down there? there? I don't know what's happening. Last they are having court-martial proceedings at the El Toro Marine Base against a female officer. Are you familiar about that? Lieutenant Mary Niflis. The Marine Corps want, wants to court-martial her because they said that she had sexual relations with enlisted men. As you know, officers are not supposed to have any relations at all with enlisted well, men. Not in my outfit. Well, and apparently there was one, more than one enlisted man involved because they say she dated from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. <laughs> have you seen their ad? The Marines are looking for a few good men. Yeah. Lieutenant Niflis found some of them. <laughs> Interesting case tonight. You sound in a good mood. This should be a super show. We have got one of the great stars of motion pictures of all times, Mr. Gene Kelly. <laughs> Mr. Shecky Green is here. A funny, funny guy. Lovely young actress, Miss Stockard Channing, is here. And Mr. Ronnie Graham will all be here. So I thank you for coming and with you. We'll be right back after this. Hey, Grandma, is it soup yet? <laughs> You know, you remind me of your mother. Really? 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 Mmm, smells so chickeny. Will it be done soon? When the noodles are cooked? It's done. It's done. It's done. Oh, noodle, my favorite. Is it soup yet? Soon. <laughs>
Lipton noodle soup, just like Mother used to make. Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plain. And where good food goes hand in hand with the natural goodness of orange juice from Florida. Nature abounds in this countryside and in this delicious drink. There's nothing artificial or synthetic here or here. And no matter what form you buy it in, it's 100% orange juice. The label says so. Natural purity. You'll get it from the Florida Sunshine Tree. Hi there. I was checking this young lady's knee. You have a hole in your jeans. That's all right. We see all the people here whose clothes are falling apart on this. Your boyfriend's got the same... Is that a... Can I ask you something? Yes. Is that a particular uh, gimmick going on? We couldn't say on the air. Oh, I see. Okay. I won't ask. We're going to play Stump the Band. Are you ready, band? We are ready. All right. There'll be big prizes for some... All right. Just... Ah, you're Eddie Shaughnessy's sister. You must go to the same beauty parlor as our drummer. <laughs> what, uh, what's your name? Uh, Mary Catalano. Well, you sound like you didn't know there. Is that your real name? No, I, I, oh, I touched him. Easy, easy now. It, we, we will give you gifts, but your, your touching is not, it says right on your ticket. Did you see, did you read your ticket when you no, came in? No. It says no touching. No, touching. No, no, I'm just kidding. Where are you from, Mary? I'm from, uh... <laughs> Are you on a lamb or something, or what? Where are you from, Mary? I'm from New York, Los Gatos, and San Francisco. Oh, no, what do you mean? Well, I was born in New York, and I lived in Los Gatos for uh, 13 years, and now I live in San Francisco. Now years. you live in San Francisco? Yes. What are you doing here? I'm tr I came here to see you. Oh, really? All the way from San oh. Francisco? Oh, yes. We drove all night last night. You did? Yelling. I'm, I'm thrilled. Oh, well, isn't that sweet? Oh. Isn't that sweet? Oh. That's right. Really Maybe you can touch just a little. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, what do you do, Mary? I'm a uh, perspiring actress. You're a perspiring... Pers I say pers perspiring actress. Are you any good? Oh, yes. Yeah. Any roles in the theater or plays oh, or anything? Yes. What have you done? Uh, I played a witch in The Wizard of Oz. That's good. I played... Uh, uh, I played Golden Fiddler on the Roof. Did you really? Yes, I played Adelaide in Cla Guys and Dolls, mostly musical theater. Are you really trying to become I'm a sorry. professional actress? Do mm -hmm. you have an agent and things like that? No, not yet. See, I'm trying to finish up school because once I get school out of the way, then I'll be able to leave and <laughs> try and do things. Yeah, get that school out of the way. It's no fun, yeah. Okay, what's the name of the Come out, come out. Come out, come out. Oh, come out. I thought he said mouth to mouth. I thought it was mouth to mouth. <laughs> I it was mouth to mouth. <laughs> we both just sound like mouth to mouth. Come out, come out. Wait a minute. No, no. Shaughnessy's, Shaughnessy's got, got it. Shaughnessy's got it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get a curl? Come on, look like me. I'm a pearl. <laughs> <laughs> Little girl, she looks so pretty. Come on, sweethearts, let's rub it so. <laughs> well, that'll be enough of that, Shaughnessy. what happens when you stay under the dryer too long. <laughs> Can you sing a little bit of that for us, Mary? And win a big E prize. And Lisa's gonna help me. Oh, Lisa, this is Lisa. Hello, Lisa, how are you? It's nice to see you, Lisa. Where are you from, Lisa? San Francisco. Okay, are you, a, a, whoops, there. <laughs> see, I have to do this on my knees. Do what on your knees? My parts, my line. Oh, this, this might be good. <laughs> This might be a first on television. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm almost, almost afraid to ask the title of the song. It's Come Out, Come Out. Come Out, Come Out. <laughs> We're in a lot of trouble. You, you wanna, wanna get the wagon for these two? Okay, you go, you go right ahead anytime you're ready, Mary. Come out, come out, wherever you are, and meet the young lady who fell from a star. She fell from... <laughs> she fell very far, and Kansas 
she says is the name of the star. Cancer, she says, is the name of the star. Would you get up? <laughs> That's almost ridiculous. Yeah. We've talked long enough. Now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. No, it's wrong show. <laughs> Okay, we have dinner for four. Are you by yourselves or do you have someone with you? No, we have someone. Do you have two more people? Sure, we'll find them. We'll find them, good. <laughs> Did you just go out and mill around the parking lot there? They have a lot of people uh, at uh, Casa de Carlos, Love which it. is really Carlos's place, but it sounds classy. It's, uh, it's the first Mexican restaurant in Woodland Hills. They wouldn't let them in there for years, <laughs> but they, no, I'm just, no, I'm just, it's a little joke, little joke, no. <laughs> Casa de Carlos in Woodland Hills. How's that sound? Sounds wonderful. You know where Woodland Hills is? No. Well, you're not... Well, you are right in Burbank. We're in Burbank. If you go out and get on the San Diego Freeway and start... And start or not oh. the Ventura Freeway. Ventura Freeway. And start heading west, right. you will run into Woodland Hills. No. Hmm? No. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, much. gals. It's been a lot of fun meeting you. I better have a guy. Okay. And you are? Hi. I'm Chuck Pickett. Chuck Pickett. Yes. Where are you from, Chuck? I'm from Chicago. Uh, sounds like a guy in movies, right? <laughs> right? Right. That sounds like a movie star name. Chuck Pickett. No, I just... I work for an airline, but I don't think I'm supposed to tell you which one it is. All right, then don't do that. Is it that bad? <laughs> well... <laughs> no, it may be a, a, not one of our sponsors. And what do you do for the airline? Uh, I'm a tour agent. I arrange vacations for people, yeah. the ones that drive past your house. And oh, you, you're you sending them up there, the people who climb, up, <laughs> climb over the fence. Right? Today. <laughs> okay, uh, what do you work out of? Uh, Chicago. Okay, what are you doing out here? Uh, just vacationing and looking around, you know, and I never thought I'd be here, but... Well, neither did any of us. <laughs> we, were, we were asking this morning, I wonder when Chuck Pickett's gonna be here. And, and uh, here you are. Remember, Fred? Remember you asked me this morning. Okay, what's the name of the song, Chuck? Uh, the Wiener Schnitzel Waltz. The Wiener Schnitzel Waltz, a good choice. Oh, we got it. Wait, 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 wait. Pete, you know that? Pete and Tommy. Well, I didn't know you were going to play that. Mm. That's the cuckoo song. Oh, that's, that's not it. No, that's the cuckoo song. That's not it. Can you sing a little bit of the uh, Wiener Schnitzel Waltz? I remember the night I held you so tight and we danced to the Wiener Schnitzel Waltz. Your hair was in roses, or perhaps they were peonies. <laughs> <laughs> the setting was gay and the music was Viennese. I was blind to your obvious faults as we danced across the scene to the strains of the Wiener Schnitzel Waltz. That's, that's lovely. <laughs> ah. Dinner for four at the Sportsman's Lodge on Ventura Boulevard. It's a lovely place. It's right up, right up there. Thank you, Chuck. Have a nice time out. Who else? We got time? What? Who do we go to? Anybody? All right, lady here. Right here. Hi, how are you? That's fine. You are? Eunice Kalut. Eunice Kalut. That's right. Well, we're going to Wisconsin. <laughs> All right. Where are you? Uh, from Wauwatosa. Right, Wisconsin. Eunice Kalut from Wauwatosa. What do you do back there, Eunice? Well, my husband is a state farm insurance man. I work oh. in his office. This is your husband? That's correct. With you. Good. How's the insurance business? Just fine, John. Good. What's the name of the song? Uh, the Chapel Fire. <laughs> Ed, you ought to know that. <laughs> the Chapel Fire. Chapel Fire? I have no clue. Chapel. You got no, no, no. What? We did have Lost class. again. Yeah, I don't think so. Sorry. Do a little for us. Okay. While the organ peeled bananas, lard was rendered by the choir. While the sexton washed the dishes, someone set the church on fire. Holy smokes, the preacher shouted, and in the rush he lost his hair. Now the, his hair head resembles heaven, for there is no parting there. <laughs> Good, we got it. 
dinner for four at any one of the eight Charlie Browns. And one of our the fellows will tell you how to get there. Thank you all. We'll be back in a second right after this. So stay where you are. You can't get out anyway. People love the flavor of parquet margarine. But when we ask them to try squeeze parquet, they're a little unsure about it. But in no time at all, they find out how squeeze parquet makes cooking so quick and easy. How it's creamy for spreading but flows over hot foods and a lot of other ways to enjoy it right at the table. But what usually impresses people most about squeeze parquet margarine is the flavor. The flavor says parquet. And now another visit to the Northern Gift Show. Tonight starring a brand new idea called Feelin' Fine. It's a body massager and vibrating heating pad. It's flexible and can be used on most any part of the body to relieve minor aches and pains or provide a soothing, relaxing body treatment. With heat alone, with massage alone, or with heat and massage together. Whether you give a Northern feeling fine or receive it, Northern is going to make you feel good. Those are tough decisions to make. You don't have to applaud every time we come back. You know, we're, we're here all night anyway. Well, we don't want you to wear yourselves out. But they know that you'll sulk. <laughs> Applause means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Shecky Green is here. He is a funny, funny man. A good friend. He will open November the 19th at, guess where? The MGM yeah, Hotel great. in Las Vegas. Would you welcome back Shecky Green? Somebody said that, uh, would you sing a song on this show? So I said, I'd sing a song, and I went to my singing teacher, and he sold me jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't be a singer in this business unless you get jewelry, right? So we'll sing a little. Of course, I don't do those crazy songs. I like to do those crazy I won't, baby, I won't tell you, baby, I won't. But it takes me too long to learn those songs. So we'll do one, one of the real old ones. So old, I think I forgot it. <laughs> Remember these? Perhaps you remember this one. <laughs> and when I tell them how beautiful you are, that never believe me, that never believe me. Your lips, your eyes, your cheeks, your hair are in a class beyond compare. You're the loveliest girl I've ever known And when I tell them And I'm certainly going to tell them That I'm the man Whose wife someday you'll be They'll never believe me They'll never believe me that from this great big world you've chosen me. Listen to this arrangement. Your lips, your eyes, your cheeks, your hair are in a class beyond compare. You're the loveliest girl I've ever known. <laughs> and when I tell them, and I'm certainly going to tell them, that I'm the man whose wife you'll always be. Jealous? <laughs> They'll never believe me. They'll never believe me. That from this great big world you chose
ends with our toast. I'll get sued. You just killed that little old lady in the sixth row. Oh, yeah. oh, that's funny. That was a Sammy Davis arrangement. <laughs> you can't get that one off, can you? Uh, I'll be all right. I thought you'd open up, but... You guys beating the price tag, a dollar twenty. Well, you want to know it's a dollar twenty-five? Yeah, I don't get that kind of money on this show. Don't forget. That's true, true, true. Hello. Yeah. John. At least you didn't open with. I got to be me. I was talking about that the other night. The, the, the guys you see in Vegas that nobody knows who come out and say I did it my way. Twenty-one-year-old uh, kids. Yeah. You've never seen him before. He says, "My, it's my life." And you say, "What life?" <laughs> Can I help you? I'm a frustrated singer, though, I'll tell you that. You sing well. Yes, I've always wanted to sing. Thank you. You do. You dance well. But, Thank you. you know, you're not dancing as much as you used to because you had the uh, the problem with the, with well, the back. How are you feeling, by the way? Evidently, you didn't have confidence in my dancing because you hired uh, Gene Kelly for this show. <laughs> we, we wanted a backup, that's all. I'm singing in the rain. God, that's, that's my stylish, favorite. That's stylish that's number. Favorite. You know, about a year ago, they held a uh, benefit for Cedar sinai at the uh, amphitheater out here. And they recreated, and, and Gene said he had never done that number in public since the, since the motion picture. And they created the whole scene with the uh, orchestration. And he came out and did that wonderful number on the stage live. With rain and everything? With rain and everything. They had special effects and the same background that they had years ago in the movie. And it was, people were on their feet. It was absolutely incredible. And He's the best. Move, he moved like crazy. Best. So how are you? Are you, through, are you getting better? I well, John, my back is getting better, yes. And uh, I feel much better now, and uh, I can go back to work. Hey, that's good. I go back November 19th to the MGM Hotel, and then I don't have to watch some of that early television anymore. You got hooked, too, huh, on the daytime stuff. Yeah, and I found out those people have more problems than I had, so I got out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> you see, they say that's the psychology of daytime television. Is the reason it has a big audience is that the women, or whoever watches at home, can say, hey, look at those problems. I've, our problems are nothing. You know what's but you funny? get hooked. You get hooked on those things. I started reading again. You watch so much television, all of a sudden you start to get a little bored, and I started reading again. Between eight and nine, I was reading. That's the family, family hour. hour. yes. And uh, I'd watch a lot of these shows, and the strange thing about it, it's really helped my act, because a lot of people were saying that I was doing too much uh, ethnic humor in my act. And now, you know, you watch shows like Sanford and Son and things like that, and uh, the people have accepted that. Right. They have accepted dialects and things like that. But if I used to tell a black joke, I used to get letters. People say, you shouldn't tell a black joke. Boom, boom, boom. You should do this thing about the Jewish. I said to Tommy Lasorda, was my audience, uh, last time I worked in Vegas, I says, do you have trouble with the racial situation with the blacks and against the whites with the athletes? He says, I want to tell you, he says, I had a team one time. I had 10 white guys, 10 black guys. He says, we had this problem. He says, and I got them together. He says, listen. You guys have got to pull together. We're one unit, you understand? Yeah. He says, not the whites against the blacks, the blacks against the whites. From now on, you're all green. I want you to get that in your mind. You're all green. All right, I want the light green guys over here and the dark green guys over here. <laughs> That's funny. We are going to take a short commercial break. Okay, pal. Pick up a dollar for the, for the company. Here, we have a message from Johnson's Wax, makers of fine products to help care for your home. That's what we have. How can you get your clothes rainwater soft without having to wait for the rinse cycle? Get Rain Barrel Fabric Softener. Rain Barrel is much more convenient than ordinary fabric softeners because it works in the wash cycle. See? Rain Barrel goes in at the start of your wash and works all the way through, leaving everything rainwater soft. Rain Barrel. Rainwater softness with no waiting for the rinse cycle. My son, the karate expert, is kneeling on a sheet of solid acrylic. It's beautifully transparent. Oh! And it's tough. Oh! And this is future. The acrylic floor finish, it's tough too, tougher than wax. Future is also transparent. So it gives my floor a beautiful shine that stays beautiful. Future, tougher than wax, tougher than he is. Yo! Fly Delta, the airline run by professionals. We take off to 90 cities every day. And Delta is ready when you are. 
from the director of Jaws, C. Goldie Hawn in the Sugarland Express, Saturday night. We're talking with Sheldon Green. Anybody call you Sheldon anymore? Sheldon Greenfield. Yeah, anybody call you Sheldon? No. Did your mother ever? Is your mother my mother used to call me yeah. Sheldon. No, she doesn't call me Sheldon, no. Yeah. She just calls me Shecky. But my, there was a time, I changed my name to Shecky Green before I got in the show business, because my mother used to raise the window up and call me for lunch, Sheldon! <laughs> and the guys used to say, your mother wants it. No, I'm Shecky Green. Shecky Green. <laughs> My mother really influenced my life. I would have been much taller in life, you know, but my mother was one of those kind of women. I don't know whether you know the kind of women that used to swear on my head. You know, if we were shopping, she used to say, I swear on my kid's head. <laughs> what I tell you is the truth. And that's why you never... I never got any taller. I would have been 6'4 <laughs> if it wasn't for mother swearing on my head. Did your mom have a sense of humor? Your dad, your folks? She did. She, my mother had a sense of humor because she did this for a reason. Really? Because I didn't talk for 15 years after that. I just was walking around going... Ether, ether. <laughs> yeah, my mother's got a great yeah. sense of humor. My father's got a great sense of humor because he married my mother, but... Uh... 29, 30, 31. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, my... Nobody in the family in the entertainment business outside of you. No, but there's, uh, there was a cousin or something that tried uh, singing, and then uh, my brother was, uh, was a drummer, and uh, was between he and Buddy Rich working for Tommy Dorsey, and he just missed out my brother because he forgot to bring sticks and a drum. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know why I said that, but... No, my mother's got a great sense of humor. I told you about my mother. You know, in my, in my act, I always talk about my mother talking with an accent, and... and uh... Does she have a heavy accent? No, she has no accent. My mother even said to me one day, why do you tell people I talk with an accent? Because I says, it's funny that way. You know the kind of money I make telling people you talk with an accent? She says, yeah, how much you money? Just, if you I just went out and said, my mother said the other day, yeah. that's not funny. And I told her how much money I make, and she's, listen, I want to say one other thing to you. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can get a raise, your uncle will learn to talk this way, too. <laughs> the bishop. <laughs> but, uh, no, they got a great sense of humor, my folks. They really were, when you were in high school, were you doing comedy then? That, at that age, junior high school, high school? Yeah, I think 14? because I think because of my uh, uh, social inabilities and my insecurities that I did comedy, and uh, to defense, self-defense. Yeah, right. Sure. To be recognized and everything, and uh, I think that's what happens with a whole lot of us the way we get into comedy. Did kids think you were? Uh, I remember I look at my old high school annual, and people thought you were cocky, or conceited, when actually you were kind of shy, and they must they must took that for being standoffish, when really it was kind of self-defense. You felt uncomfortable. Then you found out you could get a laugh by doing funny sounds. Usually f starts out with funny sounds or sound effects, right? Well, I did, yeah, with I did dialects. Things, things like that and like dialects. That, yeah. And, but, uh, no, I was very well liked in high school. Nobody thought I was that. No, way. I was well liked. I didn't say, I didn't say they didn't like me. No, I wasn't considered but uh, they thought I was <laughs> You weren't considered. You were considered. They thought I was conceited. I really wasn't. I was uncomfortable. Hmm. I don't, feel, I don't feel that way about you, John. I really don't. Now, you were uncomfortable when you were growing up as a kid. Sure I was. I'll be honest. Yeah, I still am uncomfortable. When you, go into you a room, when you go into a room full of people, say 50 or 60, that right you don't now, that know. Hap that happens to me right now. That, to this day, it, it happens to me. <laughs> now, <laughs> did you know Jack Balance at all? <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you what, he left me his pipe. <laughs> well, light it for him and send it back. No, but I'm going to tell you something. Now I've been in the you business. You know what almost... I'm talking yes, about. Yes, yes, and you're right. But I've been in the business almost 30 years. Now I don't know anybody in this audience. You understand? Hello. Now when I walk out, I, until this audience, I feel a little love from this audience. Until I feel that little love from this audience, I mean, I don't feel comfortable. Until I feel that little love from this audience. <laughs> this audience... What a hokey hope... cheap trick. Now, you know what I'm talking and about. And I went I... to the high school with all these people. That's what really I didn't know that. Now, you see, I'm always comfortable with an audience. Is that what, something? Sir, when I walk out and there's an audience and you're on stage, you see, that's one thing, because you are in control, right? What I'm talking about is where you go to No, the you're room. in control. I'm... Well, you know what I'm saying. I'm that's... not that way, though, John. That's th when you're in control... You I... should be that way, <laughs> no. because you're an entertainer, and, 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 and you're supposed to be that way. You're supposed to be insecure and full of hostilities. How come Sophie Tucker uh, used to, uh, shall we say, uh, regurgitate before every show? Uh, uh... Because she felt uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying. Oh. 
That's why. You do know this is my bad ear. Let me sit over there. Yes, I get back here. You know what I'm saying. Yes, you're right. You, now, you don't really enjoy cocktail parties and going to a no, group not of at people all. that you don't know. If your wife said, hey, we're going to have dinner with uh, 14 people, and you, do, you won't know any of them, Shecky, but you'll have a great... you want to go? No. But if you know 14 friends, and if I was there and a bunch of other guys you knew, you'd say, hey, that sounds like fun, right? Oh, John, what I would give in this world to have 14 friends. <laughs> That's Can true. I tell you, if I was to go to a cocktail party with 14 friends, and I was at the cocktail party, knowing me, after about a half hour, it wouldn't be a friendly cocktail party. <laughs> See, I, I have to stay away from that now. I thought you gave all that up. I did, and I stay away from it. I really do. So do I. Yeah. You don't, you don't drink anymore, John? No. How do you feel tonight? Would, why don't we break that tonight, you no, and I? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. That's it good. works better for me. It's a terrible thing to say, but I know that I got this problem, you know? And if I, in the nightclub, I talk about it, and I, I take a drink off somebody's table, maybe tea or maybe a glass of water, and I tell the audience that I have an alcoholic problem, and invariably it gets a laugh. Yeah. And people think it's funny, but it really isn't funny. Not funny I at had, all. Because I've got, uh, I've got a, a broken bone in my shoulder from the drinking, you know, going off a mountain 1,875 feet. That's a fact. That, like Lake Tao, I went off a mountain 1,875 feet, and people said to me, what were you thinking about when you were going off the now mountain? Now, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> and I says, I think I was wishing I wasn't hoping, I was hoping I wasn't going off this mountain. Did you, did you drive off? Again, I mean, right off the mountain, I went. And I said, my God, I'm going to die. And I heard a voice says, yes, you are. <laughs> so that made you, made you cool. I stopped, yeah. Yeah. Good, I'm glad to hear that. We're going to be two tall, dull guys, though, at parties from now you on. You never right? had anything like that happen to you when you were drinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, it knows. Uh, I'm just not, I'm not, I do not handle it well. My metabolism or, um, or whatever it is, uh, uh, I know my capacity, but it's like Goebbels said, I, I seem to get drunk before I reach it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that one little extra. Everything can be fine. How are you, Mrs. Kalman? It's nice to see you, you and your husband having fun. And then it's that one more. That's right. And all of a sudden, it's a till of the hun, <laughs> and an immediate change, and I don't know when it happens, but it happens. Goebbels is the only drinks on special occasions, like if the sun is out. <laughs> Dawn, anything. Dawn, yeah. yeah. We must take a break. Mr. Gene Kelly is here tonight, and he will be with us in one minute. Two Dear sirs, I have never written to any company before, but I just had to let you know how great Tone Soap with Cocoa Butter is. Even when you wash your face with Tone, it leaves your skin feeling soft, smooth and moist. Plus, the smell is great. It's just everything it's advertised to be. Thank you for Tone Soap with Cocoa Butter and Moisturizers. Mrs. Marilyn Singsheim, Helenville, Wisconsin. Tone, the soap with cocoa butter and moisturizers. There's something about a gray, rainy day that makes a delicious coffee like Cafe Vienna a real treat. This General Foods International coffee has a touch of cinnamon flavor that's like a touch of old Vienna. You know, when it's cold and damp on the outside, it takes a very special coffee to make you feel warm and relaxed on the inside. General Foods International coffees. It's our flavor that makes us special. I don't know what... Uh... I don't know what standards you may have as a, as a complete entertainer, but Gene Kelly certainly lives up oh. to all of them. He is one of the most acclaimed... Uh performers of our times ever to appear on screen. He's won an Oscar, an Emmy, and his additional credits include choreographer, producer, and director. It's a great kick to have him here tonight. Would you welcome Mr. Gene Kelly? It's called love coming from an audience. Shanky yes, was right. Yes, and now I feel secure again, <laughs> Sheldon. <laughs> I, know I, heard, I heard that part, but I yeah, heard go that ahead. thing about y your real name is Sheldon. Right. Well, my real name is Eugene. You see, you can't be, a, you can't be baptized, at least in the Catholic Church. Uh, there's no St. Jean, so it's St. Eugene. 
But it did me a lot of good because it, I had to fight my way to school. It was considered a sissy name. So when Gene Tunney beat Jack Denson, <coughs> then I was king. And I became Gene. That's interesting. That. That's a but up to then it was Eugene. My, yeah, my real name is Eugene Kelly. But, uh, and I'm not Italian, no. <laughs> Singing in the rain with Eugene Kelly. No, that no, doesn't, no, uh, no, doesn't no. make it at all. But I've, ever since I was about 10 years of age, I was Gene. But before that, it was terrible. Kids say, Eugene, yeah. how are you, Eugene? But, kids are, but I don't, but kids I don't are cruel, feel like a they? Sheldon. Do you feel like a Eugene? No, no, no. It's a strange thing now. The only person who did call me that, you were talking about your mother. and uh, I, I, No mother jokes here. <laughs> but she, when she would get angry, she'd say, Eugene? Ah. And then I knew she was mad. And I, see, from, even, even when I was in, oh, in college, even that old, if she'd say, Eugene, I knew you she knew. really burned at me. Now, he looks like a Johnny. Yeah, well, he's you look the like a Johnny. Midwestern all American, yeah. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Only my mother really calls me John, and when she uh, gets hacked, she can say John. Same thing, huh? I mean, it's John, and he. Mm, <laughs> you know, there is trouble afoot. You know, that's, true. that's funny. There were, you know, kids can be very cruel when they're young, but they don't realize they're being cruel, no. I guess, but they are. But Melvin was a name for a while that. When you were a kid, you were named Melvin or something like that. Yeah, that we consider that a sissy on. name. Seymour. Seymour. But I have a kid named Timothy. He's just 13 now. And all of a sudden this year, he says, my name's not Timothy, it's Tim. Yeah, I can't yeah. call him Timothy. We have a Tim at home, too. Yeah, yeah. That's right, he's 14. Yeah, yeah. And when my son, when I, I named my son uh, Christopher Carson after my grandfather. And when he was a kid, we started calling him Kit because that's Kit Carson. And my sure. dad was called, he was called Kit all his life. And all of a sudden, he came home from school one day and says, I, I, I don't want to be called Kit anymore. The kids were calling him Kitty Cat. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, That's Kit, a tough masculine guy name, frontier Kit scout, you know, Kit, yeah, and all of a sudden, they're saying guy, Kitty Cat, yeah. so now he's Chris, and that was it. <laughs> Great to see you. It's good and to I be thank here. You for and uh, uh, I, I, it's, it's a funny thing that happens. The reason I'm here is because of, I just finished a, a, a picture with Fred Astaire, and I had uh. to. Uh, to direct uh, Fred Astaire, which is not very hard to do, you know, and uh, put on some singing and dancing for him. And the picture's called That's Entertainment Too. Uh. So, um, uh, well, at any rate, everybody got excited about uh, Fred Astaire and myself getting together. And actually, all we did was have a ball. We went down and put on some songs and dances and sort of glued the picture together. and. We think it's a very good picture, and it's a sequel to That's Entertainment, which most of you, I'm sure, have seen. That's got to be so, super. Uh, but anyway, we're in the news now. Here's Fred, here's Gene. Fred was here last week. Fred he was yes, here he last week. Yes, he told me. I, I just saw him yesterday. I suppose you and both Fred get tired of the um, inevitable comparisons. You know, they say uh, Fred Astaire, or Gene Kelly, and actually you were two different styles, really. Yeah, that's true. You were more we, we, athletic we it, yes. uh, in, your, um, in the things you did. We, we, we laugh about that because we, we often read articles that say uh, uh, their styles are similar or, or did one copy the other. And uh, uh, we used to resent it the first couple of years. And then when we worked together and we, we, we had to play Alphonse and Gaston, we, we'd say, could you do this eight bar? Could you do this eight? Because we didn't have different styles. That, uh, and we, uh, we formed a friendship and for the last 30 years we've been dear friends. Let me ask you something else that I was thinking of when we were talking about the kids' names, like Melvin and, and Eugene. When I was growing up, and, and if, if a guy was a dancer, right away again they'd say, Sissy, he's dancing. Well, my, my, uh, mother, my mother tried to send my two brothers and myself to dancing school, and it, it was no go because we, we, we had to fight our way back home. But when I got into high school, uh, and again, this sort of goes back to your discussion earlier with, with Sheldon, I mean Shecky, and uh, the... Uh, you can call uh, me Sheldon, <laughs> Eugene. So anyway, Sheldon, <laughs> the, uh, John, yes. the, uh, <laughs> it made you popular with the girls if you were a good dancer. And my kid brother, not my older brother, my kid brother, Fred, I know Ed, you know Fred, the, the, my kid brother, Fred, taught me how to dance. And I was a big shot with the girls, but I too, was truthfully shy. I couldn't go into a, a room and say, may I have the next dance? In those days, when you put your arm around a girl, you had to dance with her. You know, the, you just didn't go up and put your arm around a girl. And it was, a, it was a form of courtship. 
and uh, dancing was the, the way to meet a girl and the way yeah. to get close to a girl. Nowadays, contact is out. You no. know, if you, if you touch, you're disqualified. Can I have this dance? And they're over yeah. that side of the room. Ha, 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 ha. It's a different, different world, but it's nice. A lot of people make a lot of money. Well, it was a way of socializing. You get to know the girl and talk and everything else. These kids don't talk to each other when they dance. Yeah. They just the wait music's goodbye. too loud. Something happens. I don't know what it is. Well, it, just... well, it's too dark to read a newspaper, and it's too loud to talk, and uh, <laughs> the food's no good, so you better get up there and dance. <laughs> Let me take a short break here. We'll be right back. I love that Stay with it. Creases look really sharp in the right places, but never on your eyes. That's why Revlon created new Natural Wonder Crease Proof Cream Shadow. Crease Proof Shadow. It just won't creep into creases. It's wink proof, fade proof, even waterproof. Stays fresh, stays put in 14 beautiful colors. Natural Wonder Crease Proof Shadow by Revlon. There you go. When you count up what it costs to make a really good two-layer cake these days, I've got a cake that makes better sense. The Bunt brand Ring Cakes from Pillsbury. Because in one box, I get cake mix, filling, and glaze frosting. It makes a big cake that's rich, moist, and flavorful. I don't have to buy extra frosting or filling because they come right in the box. My family loves it. And that adds up to a lot of good reasons to bake the Bunt brand ring cakes from Pillsbury. Boom, ba, boom, boom, ba, boom, boom, ba. We're talking with Gene Kelly and Sheldon, Shecky Green, Stocker Channing, and Ronnie Graham will join us. How many, uh, we were talking to Fred about uh, the way he prepared to do dance numbers and motion pictures um, and the rehearsals he went through. Uh, it's, it's a very arduous, physical, exhausting oh, yes, type of work yes. to do. What's the longest, uh, the largest amount of times you had to go, say, say for motion pictures, to rehearse a... It, it depends. It depends on the number. Now, the, the number you were kidding me about, Singing in the Rain, tonight... Oh, I wasn't kidding you. It was a very was... easy number to do because the, the, uh, the song said it all, and you, you sort of set it on the song. Right. As a matter of fact, the producer, who happened to be the writer of the song, Arthur Fried, said, what are you going to do with the song? And I said, well, it's going to be raining, I'm going to be singing, and then I'm going to dance. And, and uh, the uh, uh, fine musician by the name of Roger Edens dug up that brag, doo -ba -doo -ba -ba -ba, and that threw me the whole thing. But there are, there are the, the one number that I spent longer on than any number in the history, I guess the history of the world, anybody did, was the number I did with a newspaper and a squeaky board. And I, I, I don't know how many people saw that picture, but I had to, in fact, I had to tear that apart, and I made up my mind I was going to do it. It was, it was a hard number to do. Did you ever fall, I mean, in front of an audience when you're... I fell once in front of an audience in an actual performance at the LaSalle Hotel in Chicago in 1933. Chicago, and I broke my arm. And, uh, Did you fall or duck in Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> and I got up and I took a bow and I, I walked off. Yeah. I broke, broke my arm. I fell on a greasy spot on the, on the uh, dance floor. Yes. That's the only time. Yes, that was good. If I watch, you know what I won't watch on television? Our ice skaters. He's during the Olympics. I don't know what that is. Him, yeah. I sit there and I say, she's going to fall. And inevitably, as soon as I say it, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right on her can. It's like the skier that comes down on a wide world every time. I can't watch that anymore. <laughs> the agony of defeat. Yes, yes. that poor guy. Oh, that hurts. Really which, hurts. Which film did you enjoy the most? And it gave me the most pleasure. It was not a musical. It was called uh, The Three Musketeers. And uh, I got a chance to put a mustache and a beard and long hair down here and do a lot of sword play and punching and fighting. I thought it was just a bunch of fun. Yeah. It's like doing a, a Western with plumes. And uh, that, that was the picture I had the most fun in. The thing about dancing, you mentioned that, that uh, uh, Fred and I often discuss this, uh, uh, Fred Astaire, and, and my brother Fred too. The, the easier dance looks, usually the more time you put in on it. And if you can make the audience feel that the dance is thrown away and very careless, you've seen Astaire and Rogers, for example, floating around the ballroom floor. Well, they were killing each other, getting those steps together and working and working and sweating. But you must never let the audience 
Now, this is a dancer's trade secret. You must never let them think you're working hard. If you have to jump over something, you can't make it look like that. It has to be very light and very effortless. And to do that is the most it's important. Yeah. I guess that's the mark of any artistry, whether it's a singer or a to dancer, hide it. is just to, to make hide. it look, they're not conscious of the technique hide at the all. Work. It's just hide there, the and yeah. they're not conscious of what you're doing. How about leading ladies? Is, we were talking about something during the break. It's interesting. I suppose every time you go out, and I've seen you places where there's dancing, Every woman in the place figures, you know, you get up every in the morning and start dancing because, you know, yes. and that you can't wait to get to a dance floor and dance. Now, how do you diplomatically, without getting somebody's nose out of joint, Oh, Mr. Kelly, won't you just dance a few steps with me? Now. Well, some, well, some, so this is, this, this sometimes a problem at big parties, uh, and, and you try to be polite, and uh, the, the, uh, uh, most, Women of my generation are good dancers. I mean, the kind of dancer we're talking about at the break, cheek to cheek. And they'll want to dance, but if they come up to, say, Fred Astaire, and they'll say, oh, come on, Mr. Astaire, I know you just can't wait to get up on the floor. And he's said to get up there. Mm. And, but the minute he puts his arm around the lady, she'll freeze. And she thinks that he's going to throw her over the desk. <laughs> now, all, all we're doing is just this. Very simply done like it. N nothing else, just, just uh, the way anybody would do. But you can feel the lady is this tight, and she, she's waiting for you to throw her over the chair. So, and she Why don't said, you do that sometime? That'll probably put a, st put a stop to that very quickly. Just give her a shot over the bar, and that's it. No, but that is true. They, they expect something, and, and uh, ballroom dancing, social dancing, is a, is a polite way of, of right. meeting and talking and chatting and also moving to rhythm, to good music. Yeah. It's a lovely thing to do. I like to dance with girls. Yeah, well, that's... I really do. Yeah. I, they make the best, by far the best partners <laughs> for fellas. Um, let's sell something here. We shall be back. Do you know where your coughs come from? Watch, Watch this from Vic's Formula 44. Oh. What a... But here, inside your head, that sets off your impulse to cough. <clears throat> call it the cough maker and call this the cough breaker. Vicks Formula 44 cough mixture. Cough maker, <clears throat> cough breaker. It takes a strong suppressant to help calm the cough maker, but Formula 44 has the strongest non-narcotic cough suppressant you can buy. Help calm your cough maker with the cough breaker, Formula 44. And now a decongestant cough medicine from Vicks. Vix Formula 44D. It helps unclog your nose while it calms your cough. <coughs> My baby's not only got a cough, but also a stuffed up nose. Poor baby. Here's Vix Formula 44D. Its strong suppressant calms your cough, plus its strong decongestant helps unclog your nose and lets you breathe easier. You're gonna be all right, baby. Vix Formula 44D. From the director of Jaws, see Goldie Hawn in the Sugarland Express, Saturday night. Mr. Ronnie Graham is with us tonight. He is now a regular on Chico and the Man. He's a talented comedy writer and actor. And Mr. Graham is going to come out at the piano and play some songs. But I, I should point out, don't expect to hear Tea for Two or Stardust. Um, Mr. Graham has a slightly demented mind uh, and does bizarre things. Uh, so I just wanted to get you in that frame of mind. Would you welcome Mr. Ronnie Graham? <laughs> Pardon the uh, somber attire. I'm doing an episode of Chico and the Man tonight where I wear this as a collar. So I took it off because of what I'm going to sing. <laughs> the words get better later. My father was a vaudevillian. He played the circuit east and west. My father never made a million. But father's pants were always pressed. One day my father picked me up and sat me on his knee. He said, my boy, how old are you? I answered, 43. But at my father picked me up and threw me on the floor. That'll teach you not to tell your right age anymore. But of all the good advice my father gave to me, he 
here is the words that I hold in my mambo <laughs> I use a hard M. You've got to open a show with a song and a dance, huh? Open a show with a song and a dance. Now, if you know how to sing, but you don't know how to dance, ha huh? Just do a song, but don't dance. Now, if you know how to dance and you don't know a song, just do a dance, but don't do a song. But if you don't know how to dance and you don't know how to sing, if you don't know how to do anything, then here's what I want to know, ha huh? What are you doing in a show? <laughs> Above all, no standing ovations tonight, please. The last time I worked in a club was in New York a couple of weeks ago, and half the audience stood up. You have a number. They went just like this and started applauding, and then they looked around, and the other half was still down. So they felt embarrassed and started to sit down, and the other half started to get up. So what I got was a crouching ovation. So please, just stay in your seat. My next song is about New York. I went to do a club date there, and I wrote a song on the plane. I didn't have time to write the tune, so I had to use an old tune. But I think it applies to what's going on in New York at the present time. It's, it's a love song. Beam. Are you feeling blue? Tell you what to do Get Transcendental And meditate Ponder your fate Then catch the next freight <laughs> Or beam Try the primal way Scream Till it goes away Either way, you're gonna get creamed. <laughs> oh, poor Beam. Thank you. Now to get sentimental for a moment. This is a, an old song about mother. And I think it started Freud on his career. <clears throat> this song was actually written in 1898. There's a maxim full of joy that was taught me when a boy. I love to see my poor old mother work. If it's only shoveling snow, just to hear her puff and blow. I love to see my poor old mother work. What a joy to see them there in my little old easy chair and think of mother rubbing like a tur jerk, a turk. When she says she's tired and sick, I just wham her with a stick. I love to see my poor old mother work. Everybody sing. Once a week I rise at dawn just to watch her mow the lawn. I love to see my poor old mother work, just the girls. How I laugh and how I grin as she falls upon her chin. Pick it up, honey. I love to see my poor old mother work. In our family there are ten full-grown, strong and healthy men. And all of us are partial to the sack. After good night, we have said, we steal softly off to bed and dream of mother and that aching back. Mother, mother, M-O-T-H-E-R spells mother. Dear mom, M is for the many things you taught me, like how to win a fist fight with my feet. O is for 
the other times you caught me <laughs> playing doctor with a girl across the street. <laughs> T is for the tenderloin you promised. H is for the ham and eggs I got. Put them all together, they spell moth. <laughs> I love to see my dear old mother work. And like me, there are many, many more. It keeps her poor old bones from getting sore. I love to see my dear old mother lift that bale, talk that barge. Don't help her, kid. Let her do it herself. Oedipus, coming, mother. Word. <laughs> Now you'll probably get a couple of letters wheeling in in a few weeks saying, how dare you? Yes. Do uh, the zinger at motherhood. Motherhood, yes, I know, I know. Yeah. Fatherhood be next. But you, to father next. you take your chances, right? I take my, that actually was written in 1898. I thought you were putting me on. No, it actually was written in 1898. I think the man died in 1899. Yes, <laughs> shot by so his mother, yes, his mother. probably. <laughs> So you're working right across the... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm playing the, the Reverend Bemis. Reverend Bemis. Yes. Uh, Jimmy Comack describes, I said, what's the character? He said, well, it's this guy who comes home with this tremendous air of confidence and looks over his shoulder <laughs> and to see if anybody's looking. And uh, finally he finds out, the, the, turns out I don't have a church, I don't have anything. I, I drive a cab at nights and I don't know, it's a crazy yeah. part. So where do, you, where do you pull your ideas from from your songs? Do you, you ever... Uh, well... You file them away? You, no, I have a kind of a little thing I do. I take notes. I really do. I take little kind of notes. They're called writer's notes. A very good friend of mine, Frank P Pearson, who uh, wrote Dog Day Afternoon. He said, keep notes up on a board. Did you ever so do I that? Do you ever have a dream at night where you wake up, you used to say, and you write something down, you think it's brilliant, and then you read it the next morning, and it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever? <laughs> I wish you hadn't said that. I wrote these last night. I see. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know that. No, uh, uh, I don't know, this, uh, I thought of a TV movie that could be advertised like this. What begins as a stark tragedy, suddenly, without warning, turns into a harmless prank. <laughs> no, it's, uh... <laughs> and if, I thought while I was in New York, I ought to be, you know, careful yeah. about that. So I thought, if somebody comes at me, with a sweater wrapped around his arm, I think I can successfully fight him off with a knife. I think that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> then there's an actual sign I saw. I had to make a note of this. All when right. I came in in a cab, on the way from Triborough Bridge, this actually was a sign, a promise on my mother's head. And I sang it, my mother. Promise on Sheldon's head. <laughs> All right. on, on, on your head. R. Panzini and Son, two generations of waste paper. <laughs> <It was> actually... <laughs> that was right only there. in New York. That's uh, only in New York. Reason for a marriage breakup. This is a novel idea. Husband claims his wife never once cut a sandwich all the way through. <laughs> Whenever he picked up one half to take a bite, a piece of lettuce or tomato went over the other side. <laughs> There's hints for people who want to sing. Oh, right. The Q is the letter M. That'll do it. Any, all right, take a song like uh, Where or When, right? It seems we, nothing. It seems, no, you gotta use the letter M. Mm, it seems we stood and talked like this, you feel it? Yeah, oh, I see what you mean. You see, it's another example is mm, Blue Moon. Mm, <laughs> you saw me standing alone. Mm, back uh, home again in Indiana. I see anything A couple like of that. ones you gotta be careful about, like mm, Clang, 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 went to the trolley. That's not fair. And sometimes you can get overconfidence and go, moo do that voodoo, that you do. So no good at all. <laughs> then I, I had a fairy tale I thought about, a little story like, you know, Vera the vending machine. Maybe mm -hmm. I tell oh, the yes, camera. Fairy tale about a little tin soldier who falls in love with a toy ballerina but still plays around a little. I don't know. <laughs> that, <that's... laughs> also, I'm haunted by the fact that if we'd lost World War II, all those little plots of vegetables would have been called defeat gardens. <laughs> you ever think about that? <laughs> those things bother you. I'm getting bothered. These keep you awake at night, huh? Yeah, I get up and I write them down. <laughs> oh, and I said this in New York because I was nostalgic here, I, about here. And I was in New York and I never thought I'd get, because I lived there all my life. And I thought, got into the club and wrote this note one night and said it. And I said, 
Oh, it's nice to be back here, but I'm really sad about the fact that I'm not back in California in autumn when the leaves refuse to turn. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's the kind of stuff I write, isn't it? You're slightly crazy. Yes, we'll sir. take a break. We're coming right back. Being nagged to get that drippy faucet fixed? Have your plumber install Delta or Delex faucets like these. They eliminate a major cause of drips because Delta and Delex faucets are washerless. No washers to wear out, replace, or drip. They work as good as they look, too. Washerless Delta single handle and Delex two handle faucets come in many beautiful styles for your bathroom or kitchen. Got a drippy faucet? Get a washerless Delta or Delex faucet. Where? Call your plumber. What is that lady doing? Checking off things to do before moving, taking inventory, calling utilities, filling out change of address forms, pasting on labels. How on earth did she get so organized? She got all that stuff from her Mayflower moving kit. Even people who aren't moving with Mayflower should have one. In fact, they really need one. Write Mayflower for your free moving kit. We're back. Stockard Channing is with us tonight. Oh, yes. Stockard Channing is an amusing young actress who received uh, excellent reviews for her role in The Fortune earlier this year. And uh, since we've seen her, I think she's been busy making two other films. Would you welcome, please, Stockard Channing. Oh, How are you tonight? Oh, I'm fine. God. I don't know what to do. You want to sing? You want to dance? You want to drink? No. <laughs> do you sing and dance? Do you, did you go yeah. to dancing school? Well, I did once, you know. Yeah, did your folks send you? Did you want to go? No, I didn't go to school. I used to fake it all the time. And, and I, but I used to have these... Um, I used to really be a... I am a total fan of Gene Kelly's, and I just think... We that, all are. Uh, we all are. Yeah, I, mean, I, just, you know, I was raised on those movies and I still am. I raise myself constantly on it because I love the whole image of, of people just dancing around. Yeah. You know? Remember did, dancing in the streets? Did I you fantasize think, when you well, were a kid? Well, I used to think when I was a kid and, and I grew up and I used to get all dressed up and go out when, you know, when I was about 10, that when I was about 18, I get all dressed up, I go out, everybody be dancing in the streets. Like you know, they up did the, the steps movies. doing one of those, you know? <laughs> I found out it wasn't true. <laughs> they didn't dance in no, the streets. No, no. They, as you say, they do a little boogaloo at the opposite end of the room, and that was it. Yeah. You know? Did you want to be when you went to the movies as a kid? Did you want to be in, well, in motion pictures? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I didn't even think. I, they were so far away. You know, yeah. they were so fantastic and and everything. And the fantasy just fed me. I suppose. Yeah. It's wonderful. I loved it. Last time you were here, you were talking about a picture you were going to make called the. Uh, all-American girl, or <laughs> you said it. And I understand there was some well legal hassle about that. I did. Um, I did the show. I did Dinah Shore show. Right. And I mentioned the name of this film I just made, which is about a car thief. And uh, I got this letter from a man who made a pornographic movie with, <laughs> with the same title. Called the All-American. Girl? Yeah, it's a really coy letter saying thanks for the plug, cutie. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, so I said, well, I'm just, I, I don't want to talk about this movie because I made it and I loved it and it's great and everything, but it has no title because we have to retitle it and I'm just not going to mention the name of it as it used to be, you see. But, uh, In other words, I already gave him another plug you by gave mentioning him another oh, I'm plug, sorry, I didn't mean to And do that. Uh, he wrote me this letter saying, well, now we have a sequel and he sent me a press kit. <laughs> which was fairly heavy. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, have you ever been to one of those films? Have you ever seen one of those? Yeah, once. X-rated pictures? Yeah, I went, went to one once, and I went with um, three friends of mine, all very adult, sophisticated Did human beings. Did you feel beings. guilty? We bought four bags of popcorn, five candy bars, and there was constant laughing and giggling and comment making through the entire film. Yeah. We were all acting like we were in the eighth grade. Were you... Going, oh. Now, be honest, were you... <laughs> yeah, look at that. Were you embarrassed? <laughs> were you embarrassed by being there? No, I've seen it adults, wasn't very it. sophisticated adults, go down to an X-rated picture and all of a sudden get so embarrassed 
to, to even walk in or be seen there. No, it wasn't that. Yeah. Because there weren't that many people in the theater. I thought that would be the case, you know? Because you walk in, there'd be a lot of guys in raincoats. <coughs> First off, you know. Yeah, they always sit two seats apart. I think that's a myth, <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, you never sit next to anybody, no, you know. No. The one guy is... Yeah. <laughs> and, and us four came in, right? And there weren't really very many people there. So I said, well, this is cool, you know. But all I know is that the four of us constantly making comments as if we were in the eighth grade, 12 years old, going to a lot of, you know, mushy love scenes or something. Like, right. oh, like that. And, I mean, we're talking about people about 35, 40 years old, yes. 29. That's because they were embarrassed, younger. that's why they were probably making... Now, what's the film you're involved in now? Well, this film, I'm wearing something I wear in this film. I was going to ask you about that. And it, oh, it you were? It looks like a stewardess's outfit <laughs> or... Uh, well, you see Or you're this? a parachute jumper. You see this little gizmo here? It's a dog. This is, no, it's a coyote. I'm it stands close. for... I never was good in animal husbandry. <laughs> Who is? Who is? Some guys are strong in ceramics, animal husbandry I never caught on to. It's a coyote. Coyote. Yeah, yep, coyote. <laughs> And um, it's called Coyote Bus Lines, and the film is The Big Bus. Bus. Big Bus. bus. And um, it's about the first nuclear-powered bus, which is going to make a non-stop run from New York to Denver. Well, that's an exciting <laughs> one. That sounds like one of your, uh, yeah. one of your titles, a nuclear-powered yes. bus. Which goes, which goes awry en route because a bomb has been planted on the bus. Anyway, it's a combination of airport, grand hotel, and cats and jammer kids. As far as I can tell. Well, I, I see. Uh, if a bomb was planted on the bus, why does just everybody get off? It's not like an airplane, you know, where you're up in the air. Would, would it just be simple to pull the bus over and, and get off? Well, we, well, you don't. If you don't stop the bus, no one's going to get off. Well, you can't stop the bus. No, they don't, because they're determined to get to Denver. Not stop. <laughs> well, that that makes sense then. I didn't understand it at first. That's... I was I was on the lot when you're making that. I don't know where you were there at the particular time. Joe Ferrer was there. We're still and... making it. Are you still making? Oh, you're still we're doing still it. Still making it. Joe was. I know he was in an iron lung. Right. <laughs> on the, the bus. Villain. He was the villain. Yeah. yeah in the bus or, or in his no, room. He's... An iron lung, and he suddenly some bad news happened. He says, "Everybody, get out of here!" And a girl crawls out of the iron lung. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that sounds like this. It's an extremely. Uh, Movie. Yeah, this, is I, a, this is a comedy, is it not? Too. I yeah. assume this yeah. is a comedy, yes. Sort of a, a All righty, we're going to take a short break. <laughs> we're coming right back. Yes. melts in your mouth, not in your hand. M&M's Plain and Peanut Chocolate Candies. I never thought one toothpaste could satisfy everyone in my family. But guess who has as much fluoride as Crest? Breath freshness for close-ups and a name this famous for cleaning and whitening. New McLean's Fluoride. Unsurpassed fluoride to fight cavities. Breath fresheners, whitening with low abrasion, and a fresh new taste. It has everything my family wants. New McLean's fluoride. It has everything your family wants. We just have a short time left. I'm sorry you got out here so late tonight. That's okay. Really. Nuclear-powered bus on the way to Denver. Right. Non-stop. Non-stop. <laughs> one is, one is, is this... there a little bus behind the big bus? Because that's a, that's a terrible trip to make without... Uh... No, it's, uh, it's There's bad. everything on this bus. They have a swimming yeah, pool on the bus. Yeah, a swimming pool on the bus. You have to line up single file. You take one dive, swim the length, and off you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a little weird, and you're currently around a picture called uh, Wan Tan Tan, the, the dog. dog who saved Hollywood. I play Max Sennett, or or Mark Bennett, as my name is. Right. You would. Yeah, yes, I would. <laughs> this is also a strange picture, I would guess. Oh, it's quite strange. Uh, dog becomes a star, then he starts to go downhill, goes into burlesque, tries to hang himself. No, he does. Oh, okay. Are we leaving for the night? Well, we're going to be back to say goodnight. Yeah.
Okay. Now, Aris invites you to join the great getaway to the active lifestyle of isotoner gloves. Great look with chic, Leather strip back and palm, great feeling with relaxing isomassage action that makes busy hands feel more supple, smoother, softer, fresher. Great fit, one size stretch fits all beautifully. Slim, trim, and nimble. So slip into isotoners for driving, casual, or for dress, and get with it. Men's styles, too. For some time now, we've been telling you to get Alpo for your dog for two reasons. Your dog will like it. That's right, Renica. Huh? Let's show them. Okay. And it's good for her. You see, meat is a dog's natural food. Animal nutritionists say that it has the high quality protein that your dog needs. Like the meat in Alpo Beef Chunks Dinner. It's meat byproducts, beef, and balanced nutrition. Alpo's the only thing your dog needs. So that's why we say, doesn't your dog deserve Alpo? Stockard, I thank you for being here, really. Thank you. Hope you come back and see us. Ronnie, thank you. And Gene, I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to have you with us My tonight. My pleasure. Really. Indeed. And Shecky, you open at the MGM the... November 19th, November John. the 19th. And uh, Monday night, John Davidson will be here with Peter Marshall, Barry Newman, Suzanne Summers, the amazing Kreskin. <laughs> and he'd better be amazing. <laughs> Last time he was only half amazing, and we billed him as the amazing Kreskin, and it destroys credibility. <laughs> and the Fifth Dimension will be here. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Good night. Stay tuned for the Midnight Special next on NBC.